All right, so one thing I've noticed when it comes to skin tones is that when you apply makeup to this front character here who has the lightest skin tone, more than likely you're going to notice that this bluish purple hue is always going to be prevalent on any part that isn't under deep shadow like this area here. So that's going to be the most prevalent thing, whereas the darkest skin tone character here in the back, um, you're going to probably see the colors pop. So should you apply makeup, that's one key thing you're going to notice. I mean, both will have vibrancy for in their own right, um, but this character back here is going to have more isolated looks because of the darker skin tone. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. Also check um, real life references, which... Um, only further prove what I'm trying to explain here. And uh, let's move on to the next example. So in this scene, as you can see, this is more of a, a expansive version of my black light setup. What I will say is that these hats here in this scene are not a part of any of the emissive properties that I've added to the scene. So like with these balloons, I made sure that they had emissive properties because they were semi-transparent and more than likely weren't going to achieve the same level of uh, reflection back or at least reflection back at the camera. Um, so this was kind of a happy accident. Um, you may find that some of the colors that you're using already will be complementary to the black light scene. One thing I am a bit iffy about, though, are the white parts in the scene. Um, those should pop more for sure. So that's something that I would probably go in and alter just for this texture alone. Um, I try to do that with the present boxes. As you can see, they tend to pop a little bit more and have more of that purpley look um, um, in comparison to these hats here. Um, I did have a tough time lighting this back wall here for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, one odd thing that I also noticed before I caught the hats were these little bits here. These also, they're like little stars and shapes. Um, these also are not... Um, a part of any of the materials that I set up. They were just automatically there. So they have their own level of back reflection. So that's something I'll probably look into as to why and how that's working so well. Um, now, there are some pieces up here that I'm seeing, but those aren't you know, reflecting nearly as much as the ones down here. So I need to look into why, but I think that's really uh, strange. Um, and similarly with the uh, arcade consoles as well, or the arcade cabinets as well, um, they do not feature any changes. Um, the reason why everything's popping a bit more the way it is has a lot to do with the fact that I have uh, boosted the light so much. Um, as you can see by the glare node that I've added, I went a little bit too far. So one thing that I will say is that um, when using a glare node, you'll probably want to dial this way back um, so that it's not so... Uh, Glary, glary. All right, so so that it's not, you know, it doesn't, it's not so blown out the way that it looks as of right now. So let's move on to the next one. This is an early test of my first black light emissive setup. Um, you can tell that there's emission shaders being used here. The original goal was to try and isolate what the camera saw, which I wanted mainly to be the camera sees this fairly bright color, but it's also outputting the shadow as a specific color as well. So I learned how to separate the two um, for all of these, but then quickly realized that I'm still trying to achieve this effect without emission. And 
And another thing was in these early stages, I had yet to start baking the room, which I've dialed back on doing that as well. I don't do that as much, but I thought that that was going to be one thing that would save me the most time in terms of uh, viewport processing, which ultimately it did not. Um, but it is a good, helpful effect for a large scene if you're wanting to uh, bake some of those textures. Uh, if you don't plan on moving anything, you can bake the lighting for some of the textures on scene just to save you a little bit of time. I do think that it has its place, but for this small scene, it just wasn't necessary. Um, and yet again, as good as this looks, it still utilizes an emission angle. So there are at least three models that I need to go back and change in relation to how the black light effect actually functions to get better control over this scene. So what I'll more than likely do is a set of re-renders on my Facebook page. Um, I'll put them all together this time rather than uh, how I did it before was they were rendered at separate intervals because that's how I was working on them. But in this case, I'll be able to uh, I rendered them at separate intervals because that's how the way I was working on them. But now that I can go back and make quick changes to these scenes, um, I'll just post them as a group. But yeah, I really do like the effects. I mainly like the neck and the toes. I think that the uh, legs are a bit too vibrant and I probably went a bit much on the, uh, the glare. So yet again, another effect where I should gain more control on dialing this back and keeping these colors isolated. So it's almost like there's a uh, fog filter being applied to the image real time, like if I were using a camera, like an actual camera. Um, so yeah, that's not really an effect that I want, so something I've noticed with actual black light images, which we'll take a look at a few. Um, as you can see, the darker skin tone effect. Now there's still the bluish hue, but like I said, those colors are more isolated and they pop a little bit more. Um, she's standing very close to the light as well, and I'm pretty sure this white shirt and whatever she's standing near is reflecting back onto her skin, so that also is a factor. If she weren't wearing this white shirt, we'd probably see a lot less uh, reflective light on this side of her face. And the same goes for this Lightning McQueen model. And as you can see, it's very washed out here in, the, in this section. So um, at best, when I go back, all of this will be tightened up and in order to get, I, I should be able to see some kind of defining line between the car and the floor here. So just another thing. I mean, I am liking the uh, how it affects the blue, but I'm not sure if that's being pushed by the light coming in from here or if it's actually coming from the light source itself. Though... These nines are really good. I like the way that everything's kind of maintained for the most part. All I did was change the hue, saturation, and value to achieve this color um, because uh, it's the closest I could get to a neon blue. And I'll probably make some changes to get it a little bit closer than that. Uh, but overall, I did like the effect at the time. I thought I was doing the right thing. But yet again, like I said, I was using an emission shader to drive this. So something that needs to be changed. Hmm anything else yeah let's look at some more examples so this is actually a render I can tell by the eyes um, but they did good I'm wondering how see now I'm kind of questioning it might not be a render I think it's a render but anyway um, I'm really wondering how I, if they did this through editing and made the colors pop that way, which is a very reasonable way to do it. But as you can see, the lighter skin tone, you know, absorbs a lot of that light. So um, 
I like the way that they were able to isolate. What's throwing me off is the eyes, because the eyes look like renders. So if this is a real person, it's probably only confusing me because uh, they were in contacts. But it's very strange. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's absorbing all that light a lot more. So similarly, um, it's taking in that light because of the skin tone, not because of what the artist is wearing. And as you can see, even these greens stay isolated to the emissive you know, zones that they're in. That's it. So they don't really bleed through onto the skin too much in terms of uh, reflecting onto other parts of the surface. I bet if she had a little more makeup, we'd see a, a, some subtle differences. But overall, yeah, this is what I'm talking about in terms of skin tone. And uh, this one is actually one of my favorite ones. I want to recreate a render that looks like this. I think it's awesome. Um, wouldn't be hard to do it all. Pretty sure it would mostly involve um, either a shrink wrap modifier or well placed forced perspective. I don't, can't even see that, but as you can see, yeah, that white really takes in all the uh, incoming light source and reflects it right back. That's so crazy. I planned on doing a scorpion render, but I didn't think it was relevant. And of course, uh, to some other references, you see how like, so originally I had more of a red effect uh, when we were in our initial settings and I changed it. Well, and then once we added that key light, it turned more to an orange. So um, I would still maintain the original color source that I provided, but keep in mind that we changed it obviously to make it look more like this but it's still usable in this aspect uh, in this aspect in terms of uh, getting a neon reddish hue now I stayed away from yellow for this reason because you know what I mean like they're not too far off of course the yellow is far more vibrant but I just it's too close so I just chose not to include that one um, you can feel free to try to track that one down, um, or at least to, you could feel free to mimic the effect yourself. It's not that hard. I mean, you, um, this is a pretty solid example, but I mean, that's what you're going to get is mostly a green color. So um, we can see that this green is less reflective. And let's see here. Um, and then obviously, in order for her to achieve, I like how she did the mix of uh, black paint, like a traditional Sugar Skull makeup look, but that really helped uh, make the white makeup pop more and the colors surrounding. So like there are different ways you can achieve this effect. Um, making the colors to pop. Now, I'm pretty sure she did the same for either she's wearing something. I'm pretty sure she's wearing something. If not, then she probably had to use makeup here as well and separated the two. But that's really good. I think that looks, that looks great. So these ones are the ones I find interesting because either the photographer chose to turn down the exposure and the gamma in order to get this to pop the way that it does as we've seen in previous examples that skin tone has a large effect or the makeup artist chose to uh, do like a black makeup and then you know powder maybe they did like a powder toss on the face part and highlighted the eyes and that kind of stuff but yeah that's what i'm seeing here uh, is they either painted the skin tone to get this effect or they achieved it um by editing the photo itself um as you can see there's a small amount of reflective light coming back um so i'm just wondering just makes me curious that's all and uh, I guess the last example we'll have of 
the use of this is the same thing. It's like there more than likely was an artistic choice upon either the makeup artist or the photographer to either darken the image itself to get this effect or they actually had to use black makeup and go in and speckle on the uh, black light colors. Or, or um, there is a good chance that the, the model for the photograph has dark skin tone, so we can't rule that out as well. Cool, so those are all the examples that I have. Uh, now, I do have an extreme skin tone test that I'll be posting on my Facebook page, so feel free to check that out. Um, link down below, link on the screen, and uh, I hope that you found this information useful. It has taken me a long time to post this particular tutorial, um, primarily due to a lot of research and trial and error. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And please check out my Facebook page as well as my other social links. Um, I'll see you in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching.